And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about a common feature of whey protein that isn't often discussed, and yet anyone who's ever used whey protein has undoubtedly encountered it. Simply put, whey protein spikes insulin, the fat storing growth hormone most of us make way too much of today. While whey protein does also contain several helpful compounds like lactoferrin, which enhances iron absorption, or immunoglobulins, which help the immune system to neutralize foreign cells, whey protein also sparks production of the insulin precursor hormones, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, otherwise known just as GIP, and glucogen-like peptide 1, also known as GLP-1. So what does this feel like? Often with an insulin surge, you will feel exhausted and hungry for no apparent reason. I personally would get like this within 30 minutes after drinking whey protein and never knew why. I've since abandoned whey protein entirely for this reason. Whey protein is often touted as a muscle boosting protein, and this is one primary reason why many people take it, including me. That's the whole reason I took it, for the longest time. While whey does provide the branch chain amino acids leucine, isoleucine, and valine, which are all critical to muscle building. It never once helped me with my muscles, but it certainly and unfortunately boosted my fat storage. And again, this is primarily due to the massive insulin spike that whey protein provides. But they never mention this on the bottle. I can't imagine why. Insulin is absolutely critical for life. An easy way to think of insulin is like a financial advisor. A good financial advisor should regulate the flow of your money so you have just enough to fulfill your needs. Insulin wants to do the same thing. Regulate the blood sugar so you have just enough. With insulin resistance, which far too many people suffer from today, the muscles don't utilize the insulin in the blood and it instead goes immediately to fat storage. Excessive insulin stresses the pancreatic beta cells that release it. Also, as insulin is constantly stimulated, your muscles become less sensitive to it. This begins a disastrous cycle where absorbing the glucose requires more and more insulin, which reduces the muscle's ability to absorb the insulin, leading to increased fat storage. Athletes have the best chance of avoiding insulin resistance as regular physical activity maintains insulin sensitivity and burns off excess glucose. But for the person who only exercises occasionally and regularly drinks whey protein, the whey-induced insulin spike combined with the remainder of their diet and irregular exercise can be highly problematic. Stimulating insulin after a workout is popular with bodybuilders because insulin is anti-catabolic, which means that insulin halts muscle breakdown. If you're going to use whey protein, mixing your whey with a slower digesting protein like casein and also some fat like coconut oil, MCT oil, or some kind of nut butter would help to slow down the digestion of the whey and, of course, the resultant insulin spike. Even though I no longer take whey protein at all, the last two to three years that I did use it, I always had to take my whey with an amylase enzyme that digested the sugar in the whey, thereby preventing the insulin spike entirely. But I really feel like a supplemental protein shouldn't be this high maintenance. As an insulin protective alternative to whey, try collagen, or collagen's premature form, gelatin. Collagen provides anywhere from 9 to 12 grams of protein per tablespoon. It's great for the muscles, among every other structural part of the body, and, most importantly, it does not affect insulin. For even better muscle building results, try incorporating my personal favorite muscle builder of all time, colostrum. You won't believe the results you get with that. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.